Hello, and welcome to an explanation of the constraint type conformity index explained within the ClearCheck software. In this video, we will go through step by step how this constraint type works. We will eventually use the constraint type with an SBRT long case. Let's get started. First, it's important to understand conformity index within the ClearCheck software. ClearCheck defines conformity index as a ratio between the volume of a dose level and the volume of a target. The equation in ClearCheck is defined as PIV, volume of a dose level, divided by TV, volume of a target. Let's quickly look at an example. For demonstration purposes, this example will be defined as plan A. I have a PTV that has a volume of 15 cc's. My 100% isolose line has a volume of 40 cc's. Using the equation above, I would simply take 40 cc's divided by 15 cc's and get a ratio of 2.66. Let's say we ran a new plan. We'll call this plan B. Obviously, the PTV volume will stay the same at 15 cc's. But now on plan B, my 100% isolose line has a volume of 30 cc's instead of 40 cc's. Again, using the equation above, it would be 30 divided by 15 for a ratio of 2.0. So plan A would have a conformity index ratio of 2.66, and plan B would have a conformity index ratio of 2.0. Plan B has a better conformity index. The volume of the 100% isolose line would be smaller for plan B when compared to plan A. In general, a lower conformity index number means a more conformal plan for that particular isodose line. To start, we are going to look at a single lesion SBRT lung. The prescription dose is 5,000 centigrade in five fractions. Here I am in the patient template manager for ClearCheck. Let's start by adding a blank constraint. Remember, structure plan is the structure list coming from the Eclipse data structure set. So for this example, I'm going to pick PTV. Next, for type, I'm going to select target, and for constraint type, I'm going to select CI. For the constraint shorthand nomenclature, start with CI, then simply type the isodose line you would like to use for your ratio. In this example, I'm going to do a conformity index on the 50% isodose line. Please note, ClearCheck allows you to pick which isodose line you would like to do a conformity index on. If you want the most basic output for ClearCheck, you would simply put a volume ratio limit. For this example, I'm going to say 6 for my ratio limit. It will either meet this goal and pass, or it will not meet this goal and it will fail. For this lung SBRT plan, the conformity index is 5.687, so it passed. If I drop the limit lower, say 5, it will fail. If you want to set up a condition range, which might be considered the same as minor deviation in RTOG protocols, you can add an ideal ratio. For this example, I'm going to keep my limit at 6 and put an ideal ratio of 4. Run clear check, and now you can see that it conditions because my result is in between the ratio ideal and the ratio limit. You might be asking, what if you want different conformity index ratios based on the actual size of the PTV? For example, as your target size increases in volume, you may be able to accept a much lower ratio when compared to a smaller target size volume. Instead of figuring out what target size volume is for each plan and manually setting your limit and ideal ratios, you can simply set up a table. Let's look at this now and how this table works. Currently, the table is set up with only one row and is not using the target volume column. As soon as I hit the add icon here, we can start building the table. Now you will see a new column is added for input, volume CC. Let's build our table. So for example, if you have a target with 20 CC, maybe you only accept ideally 5 and have a limit of 6. If the target is 100 CC, maybe you only accept ideally 3 and have a limit of 4. Here's how the table works. If I have a target volume of 40 CC, that is in between my 20 CC and 100 CC volume values. This means a linear interpolation will take place. My ideal would be 4.5, and my limit ratio would be 5.5 because of the linear interpolation. If I have a volume that is bigger than 100 cc, meaning it doesn't show up on the table, then the software will simply report outside table for the goal. So if you see this, it simply means your volume exceeds the volume you built in your table. If you have a target volume that is smaller than what is built in the table, then the smallest volume row with ratio ideal and ratio limit will be used. In clear check, this will be the first row on the table. Note, the software will not do a linear interpolation from 0cc. Linear interpolations only happen between volume CC rows and columns that have been built into the table. Lastly, you may have noticed this box that says Select Structure in Lieu of Body. If you're dealing with a single target, 
it is advised not to change the setting. This ensures that the entire volume of an isolose line in the body and calculation grid will be accounted for. This setting is generally used for a special case in which you have two or more targets that are on the same CT dataset and far apart. In this scenario, you may desire to look at the conformity index of each target individually and not have the volume of an isolose line be added together from both targets. In essence, you want to isolate each target's own conformity index. This setting allows that to be done. So in this example, I have two lung lesions with plans already done. I want to run a conformity index on PTV soup, and I want to do it on the 50% isolose line, or in this case, 2500 centigrade. But I don't want this isolose down here from PTV inf to be added into it. If I leave the setting as the default and clear check, you can see on the plan sum that it reports a CI of 10.697. Instead, what I can do is create a 3 centimeter expansion on the PTV soup target. This structure I'm going to call CI PTV soup. Now, when I'm in clear check, I can set this to CI PTV soup and pick the same structure from the Eclipse dataset. Now, when I run my conformity index, it will only look at the dose and the volume of that dose that is found within the structure. It cannot be stressed enough. It is very important when using this setting that you verify all the dose that you want to be accounted for, and that it is included in the structure. If dose falls outside of the structure that is supposed to be accounted for, then ClearCheck will report a lower volume ratio. Now I'm going to quickly evaluate the conformity index of PTV inf. Again, this is a 3 centimeter margin around PTV inf. Now I'm going to visually make sure that no part of my 2500 centigrade isothose line is outside of this CI PTV inf structure. Perfect. In ClearCheck, I'm going to copy the CI constraint that I already have. Table remains the same. Edit structure template to PTV inf, change dropdown of structure plan to PTV inf, and now all I have to do is change the structure template name to CI PTV inf and associate the correct structure from Eclipse. That's it. I can now easily run two CI constraints on different targets in the same plan sum and evaluate total lung dose in the plan sum. Finally, I'm going to quickly show you how to pull in the 0813 lung SBRT protocol from our website. This has all the constraints and tables pre-built for your convenience. Warning, it is the end user's responsibility to verify the validity of these constraints whenever importing constraints into ClearCheck. First, go to radformation.com, look for ClearCheck. Next, look for the template library link, and then look for RTOG 0813 lung SBRT template. Click it and download it. In the Patient Template Manager, hit the Import icon. Verify you agree with the constraints, and you're ready to begin. Please note that this can also be imported into the administration application. Then your template would show up in the template selection area for everyone in your department to use. This has been a quick look at conformity index within the ClearCheck software. ClearCheck, efficiency through simplicity.